Welcome to St. John's Worship at Home. And welcome to those of you watching on Channel 44. Christmas is only just over three weeks away. Some of us are hoping to host our wider family for Christmas lunch. There's something special about being all together or returning to the home where we grew up. There's something special about home. It's, a, it's the place that formed us. If we can't get home, we feel disheartened. That's the hope God's people felt. But God had a word to encourage them. Hope is not lost. I will bring you back to your home. The place you belong is with me. Let's ask God to give us the same hope as we prepare to celebrate Christmas in such a strange year. Shepherding God, through this season of anticipation and hope, comfort our troubled minds and strengthen our tired bodies. Restore the hope this season offers that we might lift our voices with joy and strength. Straighten the crooked paths that we might walk in your ways. Level the rocky ground that we might prepare for your arrival in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is with us right now as we worship him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During Advent, we are decorating the Jesse tree. Advent is a time when we remember God's promises to rescue his people. Last week, we heard about how about our first parents, Adam and Eve, and how they chose to go their own way without God. Today we hear the story of how God rescued his people from slavery in Egypt and chose them to live for him, giving them the Ten Commandments to shape life together with him and each other. God loves all people in the world, even though they do not always know or love him. He loved his people Israel too, even when they did the wrong thing and disobeyed him. God wants his people to live the right way so that they will be happy and free, as he intended. He tried to help his people do this by giving them ten, ten rules to help them remember what was good and what was bad. God did this to help his people and make them a blessing to other people. The people of Israel had reached the great mountain, the place where God had told Moses to bring them. God spoke to Moses and Moses spoke to the people. I love you and I want you to be my special people, God said. But first I will tell you the best way to live. He gave them ten rules to help them be happy. In the first three rules, God reminded, reminded them to put him first. And then he gave them seven more rules to show them how to love other people, just like God loves them. God spoke to Moses and Moses told people many other things. The best way to live, Moses said, is to love one another. This is what God wants. This is the way to be really happy. Okay, children, we have, a, we have our Jesse tree here. We've got our apples on here from last week. I wonder what symbol we could use this week. Well, because we're talking about the Ten Commandments this week, a nice picture we could use would be a picture of the stone tablets upon which God wrote these Ten Commandments for Moses. So let's put up onto our Jesse tree today these pictures of the Ten Commandments to remind us of God's special rules for us. Thank you, children. So I wonder what picture we'll be putting on our Jesse tree next week. God's 10 good rules are hard to keep. In fact, they are impossible to keep because even though they are good, you and I still struggle with sin in our lives and we often choose what is wrong. But God's rules still help us because they show us how much we need Jesus to take away our sins 
and make us new every day. They also help us to know what is right and wrong if we get confused about this. Let's say sorry to God for the way we have hurt God and one another in wanting to go our own way. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have been sinful from the time of our birth and each day we have sinned in many ways, not loving and trusting you with our whole heart, not keeping holy your name and your word, not honouring people you've placed in authority over us, not helping other people in all their needs, not being pure in matters of sex, not respecting the property of others, not upholding people's reputations, not being satisfied with what you have given us. Have mercy and forgive us because of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear God's good news. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says our God. My Son, Jesus, has served the term of your punishment. He has paid the penalty for your sin. God, help us to believe in this beautiful promise and live as your people. Amen. God has come to set his people free. Let's celebrate God's forgiving love.
thirsty hearts again. God's people were in a really tough space. They had watched the city they loved, Jerusalem, and the temple where they worshipped God, destroyed by the mighty Assyrian army. Many people were marched off to Babylon. For these people and those who were left behind, it seemed as if God had given up on them. They saw no hope, no future. But today God gives the prophet Isaiah a message of hope. God is working to bring you home. Comfort, comfort my people. Speak tenderly to my people. Proclaim to them. They have suffered long enough. Their sin is forgiven. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places are plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Cry out. What shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Yes, grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now you who bring good news, go up on a high mountain, lift up your voice with a shout, lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power. He rules with a mighty arm. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gently leads those with young. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. Do you have family members interstate who you want to see this Christmas? I do. My oldest son lives in Melbourne. We haven't seen him face to face since March. We are so much looking forward to having him come home for Christmas. We've been hoping and praying that the South Australia-Victoria border would open and this happened during the week. But the current COVID-19 outbreak in South Australia means we're not so sure about his returning to Victoria. Now we're not alone. Many of you are in the same boat, especially if you have family in Western Australia and of course overseas. Over 30,000 Australians are desperately trying to return home by Christmas. It seems that at least some of them will still be stranded overseas on Christmas Day. How hard that will be. The poet Oliver Wendell Holmes once wrote, Where we love is home, home that our feet may leave, but not our hearts. Home is so much more than simply bricks and mortar. Home is a place where the most significant people in our lives have formed us and to which we return because we feel secure and loved and valued. That's what has made not being able to come home or have our loved ones in our home such a difficult thing in 2020. In a wider sense, it's true to say that we've all felt a sense of dislocation this year. We've not felt fully at home in our community. COVID-19 has meant that we've approached interactions with other people with an increased degree of caution. It's felt to some of us like we've been cloaked in melancholy, a sense of fear about what might happen next. And the last few weeks in South Australia have ramped this up and we're on edge about how our Christmas plans might be affected. 
Some people have called COVID-19 a circuit breaker. We've had time to take stock of our lives and the way that we expect things to work. We don't have a vaccine to fix this thing, at least not yet. We can't travel where and when we like. We have an invisible enemy out to get us. We're not as much at home in our skin as we once were. And with that, perhaps we've been rethinking how God fits into the equation of our lives. When things are going well, when we're on top of our game, perhaps God recedes to the margins. But when we strike a time like this, or when we experience the death of someone we love, or the loss of a job, the breakdown of a relationship, then we realise that we need something, someone outside of ourselves to give us the strength to cope. But then we might also be feeling sheepish that we've forgotten about God and all of a sudden we want God to be there for us. I wonder, does God feel taken for granted and then used? Will God treat us as we have treated him? Now, these were the kind of questions that God's covenant people were wrestling with, except that the stakes were much, much higher. They had lived through the fall of Jerusalem. Many people were force marched to the Assyrian capital, Babylon, as the spoils of war, to live in captivity as slaves. This experience was deeply scarring, not just physically and emotionally, but also spiritually. What had happened to them tore not just at the heart, but at the soul. They hadn't listened to God's pleas to turn back to him, and destruction had come. They'd run out of hope, believing that they had exhausted also God's patience and that they were totally on their own. Perhaps you feel like that right now. What can I expect from God because I've failed him so many times? Or you might come at this question from another angle. I've been through so much pain and suffering in my life, it's hard to believe that God could ever be there for me. So all I can do is get on with life, roll with the punches. No point getting my hopes up because I'll always be disappointed this time leading up to Christmas, especially this year, is the right time to deal with these questions. Now, we know that it should be a time of great joy and goodwill for all people. Culturally, we're encouraged to put aside all of our worries and adopt a naive positivity about our lives, our relationships, our plans for the future. But as we know, Christmas is a time of great stress as many people feel they simply can't live up to these expectations. What can I hope for? Human beings can't live a whole, a meaningful life unless they have a sense of their place, a home base from which they can live a secure and meaningful life. That's what these words spoken by Isaiah bring to God's people. They were exiles, people who were out of place, people who felt abandoning God meant being abandoned by him. Now, I don't know whether they expected to hear an answer from God or not, but one came anyway to speak into their vacuum of hope. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Speak to the heart broken, the hope dashed, the home destroyed. Isaiah, speak of the God who wants his people to find their true home in him. No one is ever too far away from God, no matter what they've done, where they've been. That's the first hopeful word today. Now, you and I can think of all kinds of reasons why these words can't be true. And Isaiah rehearses them. He says, all people are like grass. All human faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely, God, you're not setting us up to fail, are you? You know our brokenness, our hopelessness. It's a dangerous thing, God, to place too much hope in us. 
But this promise is immune to our best efforts to stuff it up. We are indeed flawed, fallible, but the word of our God endures forever. This is the word of the one who created heaven and earth by the power of that very same word. He can and he will do what he promises here. And why are we so sure about this? Because we know the one who has brought this promise to life. Jesus, the son of God, whose birth we are preparing to celebrate at Christmas. The birth of Jesus lays down the pattern of Jesus' whole life. It's one of total engagement in our world. We see the way that Jesus relates to people. He doesn't shy away from those whose lives are broken by sickness or by their bad choices. He receives them, he heals them, he forgives them, and he fills them with renewed hope. He does as Isaiah promises. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who are young. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and he is the way back home to God. He has paid the sentence of our sin in full through his death on the cross. His hard service, his labour of love, his selfless sacrifice means that we have a path back to God, a renewed future, a life full of hope. The one who has made his home with us through his son calls us to live at home in him, no matter the personal or indeed global circumstances in which we find ourselves. You may have been feeling overwhelmed by the flood of bad news over the course of 2020. Much of this might be to do with COVID-19, but there may well have been other things that you have lived through that have challenged you, cut you deeply, pained you. If you found yourselves in these spaces, listen to the way that Isaiah encourages you. Get up, lift up your voice, do not fear. This is what God's good news does. It changes our orientation from fear to trust, from despondence to confidence. It reminds us that we are not helpless in the face of an invisible enemy. We are God's. He is our shepherd. And no matter what happens, we are at home in God in this life and in the eternal life God promises to those who confess that his son Jesus is Lord. I am hopeful that my son will be able to come home for Christmas. I'll be incredibly disappointed if he can't make the trip. But even if he does, there'll still be one empty spot at my Christmas table. The one where my mother sat last year in her wheelchair. It was the last time that she ever left her room in the nursing home. She died in March. And while I'm still sad, the good news that Isaiah proclaims and Jesus enacts through his life of love fills me with hope and a deep, deep joy. My mother is now at home in and with God, where he tends her like a shepherd. He carries her close to his heart. And whatever happens, this is the ark of your future and mine. What a homecoming that will be. Amen. God never leaves us alone. God wants us to find our true home in him. Let's sing about God's promise of comfort. And listen to the new verse written by Mark Borges. Be 
we pray through the words of Isaiah's beautiful promise that we've heard today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your promise through the prophets of long ago that you would bring comfort to your people. We praise you for raising up John the Baptist to prepare the way for your promised Redeemer, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. As John preached a baptism of repentance to the forgiveness for the forgiveness of sins, may we live lives of repentance daily returning to the grace that gave us new birth and which continues to sustain us. We pray for those who lead us, those who are trust, entrusted with momentous decisions, especially our federal and state parliaments. We pray that they would understand that all power comes from you and that, and that they are accountable to you for the decisions they make. May they govern for all, especially the poor, the vulnerable and the powerless. We pray that nothing our leaders do gets in the way of your just will for all people. We pray for those who are oppressed, those who live under tyrannical regimes in North Korea, Somalia, Syria and the Democratic Republic of Congo. We pray for peace in the Middle East and especially between Israel and Iran. Enable scientists and medical researchers to discover better treatments and an effective vaccine for COVID-19. Smooth relationships between Australia and China and enable leaders to work for peace. We pray for those who will be ordained as pastors of the Lutheran Church of Australia today. May your powerful word, which you have given them to proclaim, change hearts and lives and bring hope and a future to those they serve. We pray for the work of Dis Lutheran Disability Services. We thank you for the care extended in your name to those living with disability. We thank you for the residents of Shimron House who are part of our church community. May we together celebrate our common identity as people created in your image and redeemed by your son. We pray for all who suffer, for those who are sick or recovering from surgery, including those known to us who we now name. and those all around the world who suffer, especially as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for those whose lives are drawing to a close, for those who care for the dying and for those who mourn. We pray for those who die alone because of COVID-19. Sustain them in life and in death. Lord God, as your servant John the Baptist called your people to prepare a way for the Lord, let us always be prepared to receive the blessings that you freely give us through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray the prayer Jesus gave to his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thanks for letting us into your home with the good news that Jesus brings to the world. As you wait for this long year to come to an end, know that you can look forward with hope to 2021 because God walks alongside you. If you want to know more about God's love for you, please make contact with us using the details on the screen. May God bless you and the community in which you live this week. May the God of love and comfort fill you with good news of Jesus and give you peace. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.